Touchdown, Tiger! Welcome you to the first ever Fort Hayes State Football Preview Show. I'm Kyle Haas. Alongside me, Travis Reese and Andrew Stossmeister. Guys, great to have you on here. And uh, it's a great time to be a Tiger fan. As a lot of excitement building around this season. But before we get into that, we take a look back at how last year finished up for the Tigers. They finished up in the middle of the conference. Their highest ever finishing in the MIAA. Six and five on the season. You know, kind of give us uh, some of your thoughts that you had at the end of last year as we head uh, headed into the off season. Travis, I'll uh, start it off with you. Well, I really think this team picked it up at the end of the, at the end of last year. Started off uh, the early part of the season uh, through the first seven weeks, really. Uh, if you break it down that way, they they struggled offensively uh, and defensively. The defense putting in a four-two-five, still trying to pick it up on the fly. The offense switching over to the spread offense with uh, the the bringing in of a lot of speedy wide receivers, a lot of big guys that they can put on the outside. And finally, it kind of clicked towards the end of the season. It, it gave us a preview, really, of going into this season because they bring back a lot of guys from that uh, from that previous year but a great season overall a lot of a lot of people if you say uh, you went six and five you consider that a great season they're gonna laugh right in your face but with this Fort Hayes Tiger team uh, really a, a six and five season a winning record first time in the Kevin Verdugo arrow era and really a great season overall offensively uh, the offense shined. The defense struggled uh, throughout most of the season, giving up a lot of points. Uh, but definitely, they, they're moving forward in the right. Well, and you mentioned a six and five year, the first winning season for Fort Hayes since 2004, when they were last in the RMAC. So the first winning season in the MIAA as they were in their third year. Andrew, what were your some of your uh, your thoughts on how everything wrapped up last year? Well, you know, something I really noticed was this team got off to a fast start as they really have the last couple of seasons, not necessarily showing in the win column until last year, but they won four of their first five games. And it was a lot of different aspects that got them those Ws. Travis, you mentioned it a little bit with the offense really struggled in their first couple of games. They were bailed out by special teams early on to give them that early break. But eventually they found their offense, especially at midseason form and then down the stretch. And they really offensively had a lot of really good games. Defense, that was kind of the hype coming in that they could have a very solid defense and a strong secondary coming back for the team. Unfortunately, didn't work out. And, you know, obviously a, sh a scheme switch never helps anything out either. Yeah, quite a lot of scheme and, and, and changes strategically. You mentioned the 4-2-5 and the spread shotgun, spread it out offense that seems to be just ravaging the uh, offensive landscape throughout all of college football. Well, the beginning of the season really kicked off at the beginning of August as the MIAA held their media day. And with that, the conference polls were announced. And as we look at that graphic right there, you see Fort Hayes State picks seventh in the conference, though it's one of those things where everybody talks about how that's not so great. That's the highest Fort Hayes has ever been picked now in their fourth year of conference play here in the MIAA. But uh, most notably, a couple teams that finished below them are ranked ahead and uh, one, key, you look at those little graphics right there, five of the teams are at least receiving votes or are ranked with number one, no surprise, Northwest Missouri. Um, you know, any, any real surprises as you look at that graphic um, or any real things that jump out to you? Uh, well, I definitely think uh, Fort Hayes being ranked seventh uh, is, is a little bit of a statement to what they did last year. Uh, the coaches are really starting to take notice of this team. They brought back 10 of their 11 starters on the on the offense last year. Their one guy that they graduated, Wes Yarbo, uh, uh, just a great left tackle uh, for this team. Uh, they're going to have to try to replace him, but you're bringing back basically everybody on your offense, bringing back seven of your 11 defensive starters from last year. Uh, and whenever you have a young linebacking core like this team does, where you can put in almost six players in that linebacking uh, linebacker position and feel confident with them uh, at any time of the game, that really speaks a lot to what this team can do. And uh, the, the seventh ranking may be a little bit low uh, in my regards, especially how they finished last year, especially if you look at the last four games, uh, how well they put up a lot of points. They put up the most points uh, of any Buddy, uh, on Northwest Missouri State last year, team that went on to win the national championship. So I think this team is going to surprise a lot of people this year. Uh, that set this number seven ranking, highest they've been uh, ever uh, as a team, and really a good start to what this program's trying to do. Well, Andrew, 
uh, Travis touched on a little bit, a little bit of disrespect. Do you think it's odd that Pittsburgh State, although they did beat the Tigers last year in Pittsburgh, are ranked ahead of Fort Hayes? Well, it's really interesting, really, when you talk about it, because, yeah, Pittsburgh State had one of their worst seasons in their school history. They have been a very prominent program since joining D2 for all of those years. They have been at the top routinely of the MIAA, but I'm, I'm personally not completely surprised by it. I can understand. I think this is more of a what's happened in the past three, four seasons type deal. If it's based on last season, Fort Hay State, probably up near the fifth mark, maybe even a little higher, as well as they played against some of the teams. But you look down and you mentioned, Kyle, some of those teams that are ranked this season. Northwest, obviously coming off the national championship win. Washburn is up there quite a ways, up at 10th. That, to me, is more of a shock than where Fort Hay State sits because Washburn, though they did have a good season last year, I'm not sure they're worthy of being that high. And also Nebraska Omaha is right up there. And Nebraska Omaha really had an up and down season. That's another team that it's in question, but I do understand it based on what's happening. But like Travis said, I think if Fort Hayes can play well in the close games, they're going to turn some heads. Interesting point you bring up about Washburn being ranked that high. They did lose that key a linebacker in Zach Watkins, an All-American linebacker. And so a couple missing pieces for the Ichabods. Missouri Western and UNO rightly deserved ranked in the top 25 after their bowl victories in the Kansas Bowl and the Mineral Water Bowl, respectively. And then obviously Northwest Missouri winning their third national title under Mel Churchma. Well, we'll take a little bit of a break right now, but we'll come back and it's time to talk offense as we'll be met by Mike Garrison. He has a couple thoughts about this upcoming season. And we'll be right back with the Fort Hayes State football preview show here on KFHS. That party was a really good time. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. Well, look, it's freezing out. Why don't no. you let me get the keys? No, you're not going to drive. Come on, seriously, I'll get us home safe. Just give me the keys. It's not safe. We can't do this. Babe, seriously, just give me the keys. I'll get us home all right, okay? No, we're not going to do it. We're not going to drive. Just give me the keys. I'm not that drunk. I'll get us home fine. Don't be so worried. Fine. Go whatever. Look out! I'm so sorry, Jill. I'm so sorry, babe. You're so right, I should have listened. I'm so sorry. When you drink and drive, it doesn't only affect you. Designated driver. Couple beautiful shots of Lewis Field Stadium here in Hayes, Kansas. As we welcome you back, I'm Kyle Haas here. Now Andrew Stossmeister is my uh, lone man to the left. And Andrew, the exciting thing to talk about right now, and that's Fort Hayes State's offense after a really impressive season last year, posting the second highest uh, amount of yards gained during the year. A um, lot, of, lot of excitement about this program right now, and offense is, is the main key. It is right now. That's the main hype, really, Kyle, is being talked about all across even some other parts of the conference right now, and obviously around the Hayes area and beyond, is that the offense, who produced quite a few points last year, they are up there in the top five, something we have not seen from Fort Hayes since joining the MIAA, but obviously the big switch, which now everybody knows, as players have alluded to in fall camp this year, is that Fort Hayes went to the spread offense and they were very, very successful with it. A lot oh, of passing yards. They had a, an all-conference quarterback in Mike Garrison who led the way for this team. And really, you look at all the offensive stats, there was one game that stands out that really they did not get the offense going, and that was on the road at Central Missouri. Uh, they got to a bad start, a couple turnovers in that game, and never could recover. But really, offense is the hype early on for Fort Hayes. Right, and, and, and duly so as Fort Hayes Mike Garrison had a really successful year, completing 61% of his passes, 18 touchdowns, just eight interceptions. A stark contrast from the half a season that he put in uh, before his broken jaw last year. We had a chance to hear from Mike Garrison earlier this training camp, and he threw in his two cents about how excited he is about the offense coming together, but also a couple games that he's looking forward to. And we can tell the defense what we're going to run, where you're going to run it. It's just. As long as you perform, do your job, you know, the play's going to work. So I can tell, you know, defense, we're going to run here, and if we block it well, they can't, they can't stop it. So I'm not too worried about it. There's uh, really one game I want to get back. Uh, last year I really got back the Truman game when I broke my jaw the year before, but I really want to get back that Central Missouri game where we come out and 
we only put up three points. And you hear Mike there talk about how the offense is coming together as we show you this graphic. Four Hayes in the first seven games. Only rushing for a, uh, just over 128 yards, just over uh, two and a quarter for passing yards per game and putting up a respectable uh, nearly 30 points a game. But compare that to the last four weeks when the offense really started accumulating a lot of uh, interest. Nearly 190 yards rushing per game. Offense uh, jumps up about 25 yards per game in the passing. Total yards, we see nearly 100 more per contest and Fort Hayes averages 40 points per game in those final four contests. Really exciting stuff. And, um, you know, he talked about it right there, just coming in and being more relaxed with his offense and better connection. It is. You know, the, the connections were there. A lot of those guys got there just a couple weeks before the season started. And it was a tough thing to go through. But, you know, it's really interesting you point out those last four games of the season. They only went 2-2 two and two in those games. At the beginning of the season, they won a lot more games, though the offensive numbers were not as high. They were able to compete. And those four games, by the way, after the Central Missouri showing, where they only they put up a three spot, and a field goal by Nathan Ronza in that game. So really, they came out to play. They were focused, and you know the last four games really were shootouts uh, down to the last quarter and kind of who got the ball last. And Fort Hayes State couldn't get it done against Pittsburgh State. Also, Northwest Missouri State didn't get the W, but they played very well in that game, especially against a team that went on to win the national championship. They've been a part of that for a number of years now, and to put up 40 points on the national champion, something to hang your hat on a little bit. It is. Um, let's talk a little bit about some key contributors that'll be back this year. All but Wes Yarborough, we alluded to him in the first uh, segment of the show. But who else is really going to be uh, an important factor? I mean, you've got the four or five wide receivers that are all all-stars by uh, most standards. And then you have Garrison. What are some of the other players that uh, most Tiger fans should uh, pay attention to? Well, you know, I think a lot of fans are starting to learn the name O.J. Murdoch very well. He's a very speedy wide receiver that has very good hands to accompany that along the way. He does a good job catching the ball. And he's, he's kind of the guy I feel that leads, that led the team last year. Anthony Smith, a guy who I think people looked upon after switching back to, from quarterback, uh, is really excited to have a big season this upcoming year. And uh, a lot of hype around the wide receivers. You know, you mentioned four or five guys. I think there might be even six or seven. A couple of sophomores working their way up as well but really you got to keep your eyes on the wide receivers and at the running back James Walker another guy that comes back an all-conference pick in 2009 did a really good job kind of moving between the tackles and finding some running room right and James Walker won't be the only one in that backfield you have Ed Smith the transfer highly touted out of uh, Miami-Dade County rushed for over 1600 yards during his senior campaign in high school but James Walker yeah it, we need to take a little time and talk about him nearly a thousand yards rushing while he was splitting time with Jacob Irvin. Rushes for nearly four and a half yards per carry, 10 touchdowns on the season, 82 yards per game. Really just puts out pretty impressive numbers and was the leading receiver out of the backfield. He was. That was the stat that, you know, some wide receivers took at it, a look at in the offseason and said, guys, we got to do a little bit better with this. But really, James Walker did a great job running the football. He And like you mentioned, lead, led the team in receiving, did a good job, you know, on the swing passes out of the backfield. And he also did really well running those five yard hitches. He found a way to get open. He was the good dump play for Mike Garrison. He did a, a successful job. And like you mentioned, Ed Smith coming in out of Miami, he's going to be very touted and he'll be able to fill in right behind him. It'll be interesting to see what James Walker brings to the table as the full-time starter. He was a really nice surprise for the team last year. We'll see how he follows that up. And, and none of this can go forward without the guys in the trenches. Four of the five players off last year's offensive line return and, and any team will tell you that how important it is to have a cohesive unit that have played together and for the most part these guys have played w well together now expecting Lamar Leon to step in in a left tackle position. It is that's going to be a very important spot you know you talk about the 10 out of 11 starters back you might have one of the toughest positions to replace in left tackle the blind side of your quarterback and Mike Garrison a guy that's kind of been working with Lamar Leon as you mentioned he's been a very very good left tackle but he hasn't seen a whole lot of time and it's going to just take some time to get used to that but you mentioned the rest of the offensive line a lot of those guys have been working together now for the last couple of years and they've really been working on the same unit four of those five starters are back so looking for more success in their second year of the spread offense i think one of the key factors will be getting some stability as fort hayes allowed the most amount of sacks tied with northwest missouri though Northwest Missouri played those four extra games, so the Tigers have a little bit of work giving up 26 uh, sacks in the backfield, though due in large part because Mike Garrison does scramble to a bit 
and uh, tries to avoid those tackles, sometimes you end up uh, catch, uh, holding onto the ball too long. Yeah, it really is. You know, Mike did hold on to the ball a couple of times in certain situations last year that really hurt his team. And, you know, they were considered, I guess you're going to call it a quarterback sack on his own accord. But really, the offensive line did well last year. They suffered some injuries with Wes Yarbo, who we've talked about in the past. But, you know, a couple of injuries to that left side and nothing kind of gives a little bit of an irritation to that quarterback than worrying about his blind side, worrying, hey, it's a guy coming off the end and just looking the other way. That's something they're going to have to deeply improve on this year. With all these sp uh, sprinting wide receivers and, and running backs that can come out of the backfield, one of the players that gets lost in this whole conversation is Bo Gadwood, the uh, sixth-year senior. Uh, former, they played at the same institution as, as Garrison at Butler Community College. Um, but he kind of gets lost in this whole thing. He had a relatively successful year last year, three touchdowns on 26 receptions, uh, just under 400 yards receiving. How do you see his role fitting into this offense? Well, I think he's going to have a very interesting role this season. I mean, Mike has really had that connection, like you mentioned, with that going back to the Butler days at the community college where they were very successful out there. But Bo Gadwell, who is the lone experienced tight end for the most part, a couple guys are back. Grant Brown is also back at that position. But, you know, unfortunately, Gadwood, I think, is another one of those guys that's just lost in the fold with about three or four other wide receivers. And Gadwood, being a senior, he's been around a while, has been playing football for a good amount of time. He's going to be one of those key factors Mike will be looking for, I think, not only on third down, but in the red zone as well. All right, I'm going to hit you with this real quick. Give me some numbers. How many yards per game do you actually think this offense is, is realistically capable of knowing that the defenses are going to key in? Mike said, we'll tell them where we're going to throw it. We're still going to hit them. Realistically, how many yards can we expect on the ground and through the air with an offense like this? Well, it's, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And, you know, even though the other team is going to know what's happening, I think they're still going to be able to put up a lot of numbers. Mike Garrison, just over 200 yards last season. I expect him to get above that, you know, 250 as possible. With so many talented wide receivers, also James Walker at the running back spot, Bo Gadwood, like you mentioned, at tight end. So many choices to see. Uh, and with what we've seen in the conference as of last season, nobody really played defense other than Northwest Missouri. And Fort Hayes really blew their averages out of the water in their game that they play. But I'd like to see, I think Fort Hayes is a possibility of, of throwing for at least 250 yards and running for possibly at least 150. All right, I think those are relatively conservative numbers given everything we know. Well, time to take our breath and, and try to catch it as we finish up this conversation on the offense. Up next, the defense and the uh, challenges that they were presented with during the 2009 season and how they hope to rectify it. Well, we welcome you back here to Lewis Field Stadium, site of many Fort Hayes games in the upcoming year. But where we're at right now is a beautiful landscape behind us as Fort Hayes State gearing up for another season here at Lewis Field Stadium. I'm Kyle Haas. Alongside me now is Travis Reese. And Travis, bring you in to talk a little bit of defense. And if we talk about defense from the 09 season, there's going to be a lot of wrinkles on a lot of people's faces. Yeah, it, it, was, it wasn't a pretty year by any means for this defense. They gave up the most points uh, of, the, any, of any MIAA school, the only team to give up over 50 touchdowns uh, on the year. They, they were routinely ranked in the bottom three in pass, in pass defense, uh, rush defense, and total defense. Uh, just a not, not a good defensive year 
and you have to blame it on switching to that 4-2-5, had some injuries in the secondary, and really just didn't have uh, the, the stable of, of, of defensive backs that you need to run the 4-2-5. It's based, it's based to take away the pass. You put five guys back uh, in the secondary to try to help your team uh, eliminate some of the pass, and, and they just they didn't have the core re, uh, defensive backs to do that last year. Right, and, and as we take a look at this graphic right there, you can see Fort Hayes State in rush defense, ninth in the conference, giving up nearly 200 yards per game, eighth in pass defense, just under 260, over 450 yards of total defense, which ranked them last, and scoring defense. You know, the offense was able to put up over uh, 30 points per game, but it's hard to win games when you're giving up 36 and a half per game. So a lot of big question marks, and it really kind of came a, a came to fruition during that Northwest Missouri game. We allude to them because they're the national champions, and if you want to be the top, you've got you to gotta start knocking off some of the top dogs. But the Bearcats came in here and laid up a 66 spot, and I think at that point was when everybody realized that the 425 was not going to fly this last season. Yeah, and really it's, it's, it's such a hard defense to run, and you have to be able to run it to perfection. You can do a lot of stuff out of, out of a 4-2-5, especially if you have good, solid safeties. You can walk them up onto the line. You can bring them on a blitz. You can do a lot of blitz packages. But against a team like Northwest Missouri State that has such a high-powered offense, uh, they ranked first in every offensive category uh, this past year in the MIAA. And uh, if you can't pr protect against the pass, which is what Northwest really hurt Fort Hayes with, uh, it's it's very tough to stop them. And and with the 4-2-5, whenever Northwest will switch over to a run, you only have two linebackers there. Really, that can come up and stop the run. And with a good offensive line, you can take away those linebackers away. So it, it was tough last year for this defense to really adjust uh, to the speed of the MIAA and to the high-powered offenses that we have in this conference. We had a chance to listen to a couple uh, uh, Tigers on defense kind of give their point of view about the 4-2-5 and the comfort of going back to the 4-3. It, it was embarrassing last year, some of the games we played. I felt anyway. It was, it was frustrating. We needed, uh, defensive-wise, we needed to work a lot harder to get better, get stronger, faster, and I think we we did that. I think I think getting back to the four three will be really good for us. That's what we were brought in. I think all of us were brought in to play the four three with under Minigas. So. It all comes down to the same defense that we were running two years ago. I mean, this is this is what I know because last year, you know, I was just like everybody else. I had to learn it because it was new to everybody, and that was hard for us to come out in that first year to run that. But this defense is what I know, so this is what I'm comfortable with right here. Well, you hear it right there. I mean, just. Uh, it's kind of a relief to go back into the 4-3. They, you know, talk about uh, all the players have talked about the comfort level and being able to come into camp and just fly through stuff and still having to stop through and stutter through things. Um, now that they are in this 4-3 and now that there's these expectations and they have so many players back, what realistically can they go ahead and put out on the field and produce every year or every game this year? It's gonna. You're probably gonna see a lot more run, uh, run defense uh, than we saw last year because you're going to have seven guys in the box that you can bring on different blitz packages. You can bring them on different from different locations. You can put your two outside linebackers farther towards the ends and bring them on on the outside and bring your ends on uh, bring your ends towards the middle to try to plug up a hole and create confusion for the for the tackles on the outside for an offensive line. Also, you're going to see a lot of different coverages uh, than you saw last year. Uh, last year, it was more combination coverages where you're going to have more guys sitting in the middle. You can put some guys back as well. Uh, with the 4-3, you're going to see a lot more cover three and cover two uh, where you're going to have corners dropping back uh, deeper to go basically one-on-one -on -one, uh, with a wide receiver with the linebackers covering the middle and the flats. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a different defense. I expect a lot better rush defense. Uh, and looking at some of the players that this team is possibly going, be, possibly going to be bringing in this next year on defense, I expect a lot better pass defense as well, especially with corners getting more experience and that linebacking core is going to be key for this team. When you talk about corners getting experience, one player that's gotten plenty of experience in the past has been Mikey Walker, and last year in just eight games, he was able to snag a pair of interceptions, take a, one to, back to the house, a uh, pretty good game and pretty good season in only eight games, but he had a lot of help. Nick Dreitz, uh, starting middle linebacker for last year's team, led the team in, in tackles, had a couple tackles for loss, but really not getting the defensive production that they expect. In fact, the nose tackle, uh, Jacob Crossman, led the team in sacks. 
not not what you like to see. Normally you plug up gaps as a defensive tackle. So what are going to be the key contributors for this team? And, and Wayne Shepard should be a nice addition on the opposite side of Mike, uh, Mikey Walker. Well, you definitely have to look at the secondary. The guys you mentioned, Mikey Walker, Wayne Shepard. Uh, you're also going to have Seth Blackwell back at a safety position. Uh, he played more of a linebacker uh, position last year. He's going to move back to his natural position at safety. So he's going to be able to come up and, and really play the, ki the kind of defense he likes to play, come up and hit people, play the run, but still be able to drop back and play the pass. But in my opinion, the linebacking core is going to be the key to this team. Last year, they're returning three guys that finished in the top 15 in tackle in the MIAA. Nick Dress, one of those guys that you mentioned, led uh, led the team, was fourth in the MIAA in tackles last year. He's going to be a main contributor uh, on this team. And you, where, where you're going to the 4 3, you're going to have that extra linebacker out there that's going to give guys breaks. You can rotate guys in. And also, Jacob Crossman, the guy you mentioned leading the team last year in sacks, also led the team in tackles for loss. He's going to be back moving over into a defensive tackle position. Uh, so he's going to be able to do more and get more production out on the defense. Line. Well, we don't have a little bit, we have just a little bit more time, but Fort Hayes State really doesn't have a kick or punt returner. Um, I think the one that is, has the most yards is Bo Gadwood with uh, six receptions last year for uh, 66 yards. The most with most yards is, is Timmy Parker with uh, two returns for 68 yards and one long 51 yard return. How do they fill that gap and who are they going to plug in more than likely uh, to fill that position that CJ Lovett just did a great job at? You have to look at the wide receiver core that this team has. You have a stable of running backs. Uh, you have guys that are on the second string of this team that can start at a lot of MIAA schools. So you have to look there. They have some speed there. Uh, O.J. Murdoch might see some time. And the kick return, I don't imagine he's going to be much in on punt returns. Uh, with kick returns, you have a little bit more time. And I don't want to say a little bit more safer than a punt return, uh, but you're probably not going to get um, – you know, hit pretty hard whenever you're looking up at the ball on a kick return. Um, so they have, they're probably going to put in a lot of uh, a lot of wide receivers. You also also look at a guy you guys just mentioned in the last segment, Ed Smith, a guy who's got some speed, got some explosiveness. We've seen him in practice here a few times, and he has one of those second gears you always hear about. If he if he gets a gap and he's got some green ahead of him, he's probably going to take it to the house. So there's a lot of guys that you can put back there to return kicks and punts. One other thing is that Ethan Kozier, also known as the Boot has been a top punter in the conference, ranked second last year, and averaged over uh, 40 yards per punt attempt and 11 inside the 20. So a big weapon right there for Fort Hayes State in that regard. Andrew Stossmeister is going to join us back on here as we'll talk about our expectations, our limitations, and our overall picks for this year's upcoming season. We'll be right back. Missed any shows this semester? You can catch them now. Watch your favorite show anytime you want by going to www.kfhs.net and click on KFHS TV. For KFHS programming, visit the website at www.kfhs.net. Americans throw away 2.5 million bottles every hour. What's worse, not all of those bottles make it to the trash can. Can you imagine 2.5 million plastic bottles being disposed into our public areas? Recycling is simple and easy. Just place your items into a blue bag. When you recycle, you save everybody money, including on your energy bill. Take the next step. Contact your local recycling center for more information. Do your part to conserve energy and keep our public areas clean. Do you wanna? Oh yeah! Well, we welcome you back for our final installment here on the Football Preview Show. And we've got the whole cast together here to kind of give our preview and expectations for how things are going. Uh, guys, it, it's, it's hard to talk about the previews um, and the expectations and limitations if we don't look ahead at the schedule that actually presents Fort Hayes. And as we take a look at the home schedule, Fort Hayes given a gift somehow getting seven home games with five of those being night games and uh, two against very potent opponents in Washburn and Central Missouri. That Washburn game on October 2nd 
is going to be the homecoming contest. And last year against Emporia State, Fort Hayes drummed up a lot of support for the program. Granted, it was almost a 400-yard uh, passing night for Mike Garrison, but Fort Hayes had the largest crowd that they've had since 1996 here in that contest. You can only expect that, that if the, those two teams are on a collision course and Fort Hayes is undefeated and Washburn is undefeated, you can expect uh, a lot of fireworks on that game, but that's a long ways away. That's that's quite a way. That's about seven, eight weeks away, it seems like. So uh, plenty of games before that. But, guys, give me some of your thoughts on uh, the schedule. Andrew, you first on uh, kind of how the schedule shakes out for Fort Hayes. Well, it's a really nice thing to have all those all those home games, seven of them to start to be exact. is never a bad thing to work with. But, you know, the opponents at the beginning of the season aren't, aren't too tough. Fort Hayes should be able to navigate their way through to that Washburn game. So it is kind of fair, especially as a, for us to look ahead to that game of, hey, that one's going to be circled in red pencil, I'm sure in a lot of places on a lot of people's calendar because potentially Fort Hayes could go into that game undefeated and a lot of good things could happen. I personally do not think Washburn will be undefeated at that point. They have a tough start to their schedule, but re realistically, Fort Hayes State has uh, things really lined up to get off to a fast start. Uh, Travis, uh, your thoughts on that as Fort Hayes' first four opponents uh, allow upwards of, of 30 points per game. Fort Hayes averaged 30 points per game throughout the whole season last year, including only three points against Central Missouri. Those offenses don't score a lot of points, so it'll be a great chance for Fort Hayes to work on some of the defensive schemes. Well, yeah, that's definitely going to be a key thing for this team. Is That's why you schedule those easy non-con opponents so that you can – work your way back in into your schedule you get western uh and then east central uh right after that before uh you have a little bit of a break you get the bye week in there and so you have a great opportunity before you host truman and then go to emporia state and emporia state might be one of those trap games uh for this team as they might be looking forward to that washburn game especially if washburn's on a little bit of a roll Emporia, even though they're they're usually in the bottom of the conference, still one of those tough places to go on the road and play. Uh, we've seen Fort Hayes lose at Emporia a few times here in the past few years, so uh, that's going to be a key game for the team if to to get to that Washburn game. I think they can probably still get to Washburn undefeated, uh, but I think the beginning beginning of the season is going to be crucial for this defense primarily to get back into the flow, flow of the 4-3 and get back uh, into just playing sound defensive football. Right, and we, we look at that first game that comes up on August 28th. That'll be here uh, at Lewis Field Stadium. Last time Western State rolled into here, they got rolled out 52-3, to kind of a drum, or excuse me, 55-3. to Don't want to shortchange the Tigers by three points but just kind of a drumming that they laid to the Mountaineers. Western State really didn't have any idea what was going on. Week after that, Fort Hayes will have East Central. Nice storyline right there. Uh, head coach for East Central, the Tigers. It'll be a Tigers-Tigers matchup, and uh, he's a former Fort Hayes State Tiger, so a nice little connection right there. Then that bye week. Uh, Travis, how important is that bye week going to be to Fort Hayes at that point? Well, that's going to be crucial for this team because you're going to be able to get some of those guys that might get banged up in the first few weeks just trying to get back into football mode. Uh, you know, you're always going to have the cramps in week one and two. Get those guys an extra week to work on just the basics. Get back to fundamental defense especially, and you're going to have a little bit more timing uh, to work out your offense. Uh, Mike Garrison has talked before on how important it is uh, to have uh, those all of his running, all of his wide receivers back the second year. He has a great timing with them now. That bye week is going to give them even more time to work on their connections, work on that time before you get into your MIAA schedule. And even if you have some injuries, maybe somebody gets dinged up in a freak accident uh, going into one of those first two weeks, they have that extra week to maybe heal up and get back before you get into the tough part of your schedule. Right, and you talk about that tough part of the schedule. After Fort Hayes navigates through the Ichabods and the Mules of Central Missouri, a couple big games come calling on that schedule. Got to go to Northwest Missouri, got to go to UNO and take on the Mavericks up there. But then that game, October 23rd, is looking like a huge Saturday, not only for Fort Hayes, but for all of the conference. And we'll get to that later out throughout the year on Tiger Nation. But that game against Pitt State, personally, I have vested interest in it. I, I know there's a lot of uh, students who go to Fort Hayes State that really would like to stick it to Pitt State after all the years of them being kind of cocky and arrogant in here. And whenever Pittsburgh State comes in here, it's not always the easiest environment for them. So uh, that should be a nice little storyline to keep tabs on. Guys, real quick, uh, we'll start off with Andrew. What are your actual, what are your general expectations for this Fort Hayes State team 
given everything that we've touched on here in this show? You know, I think actually I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak around and go back to the other side of that, and I'm gonna look at defense. I think Fort Hayes is, you know, all the pressures on the offense. I think the defense is gonna be able to play a lot faster than they did last season. They really struggled, not having a lot of opportunities. Uh, to, to really work things like we've mentioned pre met multiple times in that 4-2-5, I think they're going to be able to play a lot of reaction football, something they couldn't do too much last year. That's going to be important. But I think just as all the players are reiterating, anything less than seven wins is, is a disappointment. You know, postseason has got to be possible. But if I'm going numbers, I'm saying seven and four. I think potentially eight and three is within reach. But there's some games on that schedule that are very – near and glooming slightly that Washburn game obviously Pittsburgh State's going to be an interesting game Northwest in there as well all right Travis your thoughts expectations and what might limit Fort Hayes to uh, your expectations well I definitely think I, I agree with Andrew it, it's going to be probably a, a seven and four uh, possibly an eight and three um, you also could have that trap game that can knock them back down to a six and five um, I think the, the defense is going to be a key uh, for this team. How well they switch over from the 4-2-5 to the 4-3 is going to be uh, is going to carry this team. The offense, we all we all know how how well this offense can run. Mike Garrison put it perfectly. Uh, no matter he could go out there and give the uh, give the defense the play if they run their offense the way they should, it's going to work. That's how a spread offense is designed. So I think the offense is okay. It's going to hinge on on the defense, especially in that defensive secondary. They're going to have some guys who have more experience now. If they can hold other teams' passing attacks uh, down a, a lot lower than what they did last year, and also third down conversions was a was a key stat for this defensive team last year. Gave up nearly 80 percent um, of their defense. Uh, excuse me, 60 percent of their defensive third down conversions. So that's a number that has to drop for this team to get to that seven, four, eight, and three mark. It is. They got to win those close games as well. And that, that's what it'll come down to, as it always does here in the MIAA. Well, it should be an exciting one for Andrew Stossmeister and Travis Reese. I'm Kyle Haas. Thanks for joining us on the first installment of the uh, Tiger Nation football preview show. We'll hope to see you uh, out here at the stadium. But if we don't, we'll catch you on Channel 17 for KFHS's production of Tiger football. Have a good day.